and born in a city that is prosperous, in a time that is peaceful, without any disability, and basically into a family where I was provided with every resource and opportunity that I needed to pursue what I wanted to. So as Spider-Man's uncle once said, with great power comes great responsibility. And I felt like I'd been blessed with much, and I felt the need to give much. So at that point, I decided the best way to give back to society would be to become a doctor. So I actually went to medical school. And today, I work as a practicing doctor with a HCA hospice care. I look after terminally ill patients in their homes. However, I also did become an entrepreneur. I started a bunch of businesses. I am a partner at Trinity Gallery and Trinity Bridal, boutiques that bring in international designer gowns. We bring in some of my favorite designers, people like Oscar de la Renta, Monique Lillier, Carolina Herrera. I also started a boutique event planning business called Milk and Honey Event Design that specializes more in intimate parties and bespoke events. And I also am starting a co-working space called Treehouse, which is catered to entrepreneurs with families, so people who want to balance having an ambitious career with also being involved parents. And this is actually opening in Orchard Road, right in the heart of Orchard Road in early 2016. So please keep a lookout for Treehouse. And I think all my experiences as an entrepreneur made me also realize that there is a gap in Singapore's startup ecosystem. And in particular, I think that female entrepreneurs face very specific challenges, whether it's related to you know, societal expectations about the role of women, or whether it is gender biases that make it harder for female entrepreneurs to actually raise funding for their businesses, or just you know, workplace cultures that make it hard for women to have work-life balance and to balance and prioritize having their family as well as having a career. So all of this inspired me to start, a, to co-found a non-profit um, social enterprise called CRIB. So our mission at CRIB is to empower women to become successful entrepreneurs. And we do this through three core programs. The first one being CRIB Society, which is a business network and a great group of women who support and inspire one another. We have CRIB Match, where we actually match make entrepreneurs with um, potential angel investors and potential co-founders and business partners. And we also have Crip Inquip and Crip Incubator, where we give our entrepreneurs access to mentorship, to business training and business equipping, to a powerful resource network, as well as a business incubator. And actually, we are raising a social enterprise grant for female-led businesses with a social impact. So if you didn't win $100,000 from NTUC, you still have hope with CRIB. So apart from my roles as an entrepreneur, I actually also write for several travel magazines as travel journalists, um, magazines and online publications. And because I am very passionate about giving back to society, I also commit time to raising funds for funds and awareness for several charitable causes that are very important to me and that I'm passionate about. And my biggest role of all is as a mother to my two boys, Kian and Luke, or three boys if you count my husband. When I tell people about all the different things I do, it sounds like a lot of stuff. So I often get asked, how do I do it all? The truth is that there are so many different answers to this question. There's things like having strong family support, good business partners, um, having good time management and organizational strategies, Things like following your dreams, being yourself, knowing your limits, and all these other cliches that are actually also true. So when I'm asked, you know, how do I do it all, usually I just say I don't know because it's easier, and actually I really am quite busy. So <laughs> Now that I'm here today, I actually want to share two principles that I feel have helped me to do all the things that I'm doing. And I apply these principles when faced with the question, should I do it? Should I go to medical school? Should I start a business? Should I quit my job and become a professional pole dancer? When faced with the question, should I do it? My two principles are, one, ask why you want to do it, and two, just do it. So first, ask why you want to do it. I mean, it seems like quite common sense, but it's actually really easy to forget to think about what your actual purpose behind doing something is today. I think 
Um, a lot of you here are entrepreneurs, and I guess I'd like to ask you whether you know why you are doing it, why you are starting a business. A lot of you might say it is to make money, right? But if that's your answer, I would also implore you to just think one step further and ask, why do you want to make money? Is it because you want to gain recognition and validation that you're good at something? Or is it because you want to earn money so you can spend it doing things that you enjoy and pursue your passions? Or do you want to earn money so that you can give it away and make an impact on society? I think all of these reasons are very valid reasons, but it's important to know why you want to make money because at the end of the day, money alone is not enough. I think you need to have a purpose. So my husband, John, who is a VC, is actually a bit big inspiration for me in this regard. Okay, to be honest, when I first met my husband, I actually thought he was quite a dodgy guy because um, the first few times we met were always at a club. I hardly ever went clubbing and every time I went, he would be there and he would like, be partying really hard and, and then be a bit over friendly. So I thought he was kind of dodgy, you know, and I, I, I didn't think very much of him. But one Sunday I bumped into him and he was carrying a Bible and then he said, I am coming, I just came from like singing in the church choir and I was like, what? You know, I realized now that first impressions can really be very wrong because he's actually not that dodgy. He is um, very grounded in his faith and his values, and he's a person who really believes in doing everything for his purpose, according to a purpose. And so he works harder than anybody I know to earn money. But that kind of drive to work so hard to earn money has to be com coming from something more than just the money itself. And for him, it, he's driven by a desire to use the money that he earns to make an impact in the world positive impact in the world. So we've actually said that you know, if we do build any wealth, we would like to give most of it away to charity because you know, we want to make a positive impact on society. And so far, our kids are too young to protest to that. But my point is that if you know why you're making money, I think it will make you much more motivated, much more driven, and make you much more hardworking, and increase your chances for success. So I don't know how many of you have seen this diagram before. I think it's really nifty. It talks about how to find your purpose, which is the intersection between what you love doing, what you're good at, what the world needs, and what you can be paid for. And I think when I was thinking about whether or not I go and do medicine, I was subconsciously applying this. And even at that time, I think I saw a purpose in being a doctor, that it would be something that I'm decent at, that I would enjoy doing, that would make a difference in the world, and I'd be paid a salary. It's not a big salary, but it's, it's a salary. So I think it applies even more in terms of entrepreneurship. You know, Knowing your purpose is super important because for those of you who are entrepreneurs, you would know or you're about to know that entrepreneurship is a very long and difficult journey. There are going to be ups and downs, and there are going to be a lot of obstacles. Things like falling out with your business partners or you know, months that you go through without any revenue or maybe circumstances that just appear out of nowhere and disrupt all your plans. And sometimes what it takes to be a successful entrepreneur is just the sheer persistence to stick it out during rough times and it's going to be very hard to do that if you don't know why you're doing it. So I think it's important to ask why. And if your answer is that intersection between the three, four circles, then it's time to apply principle number two, which is just do it. It's from Nike. In my time working at Crib, talking to a lot of aspiring entrepreneurs who want to start a business but actually don't do it, I realized that the issue is a lot of people just don't take that first step. You know, taking that first step is crucially important. Um, a lot of times people don't do it because they're overthinking things, over and analyzing everything and thinking through every possible scenario and not willing to move forward until everything is just perfectly lined up. But sometimes that just never happens. I like to call this analysis paralysis. Or it may be they don't want to take the step because they don't have the confidence to do that. Um, this is actually the impetus between our SG50 Women for Women campaign at Crib. Because we found that, or we believe that a lot of women do not start their businesses even though they want to because they just don't have the confidence to do it. And we think part of the reason is because there aren't good enough role models. So we have actually put together 15 iconic women, one of them being 
our wonderful Ilim, who's a speaker tonight as well today. And we're trying to raise them up as role models, tell their stories, tell their challenges and difficulties and how they overcame them, and basically demonstrate that it can be done, you know, having the strong business, the good family, the, um, you know, all the, all the different things that you want to see as an entrepreneur. It's possible to do it. And we want to hope that this inspires the next generation of women entrepreneurs to take that first step in confidence and to basically just do it. Because the truth is that unless you take that first step, nothing is going to happen. For me, when I graduated after medical school and I, after the first year of housemanship, I was actually invited by my um, professor and mentor to try a job at palliative care. At that time, I was very scared of the prospect of working with elderly patients who are all about to pass away. But I decided to just be a little bit courageous and I took a first step to give it a try. I remember my first week in the hospice, I was told to go and take blood from one of our patients. We actually hardly ever do this in palliative care, but he needed it, so I went to take blood from this patient. And he was sitting on this table and I came to him. And he was sitting down there and I started drawing blood. And he, was, he seemed quite tired, so he just sort of leaned forward and put his head on his arm like that. And so I finished drawing blood. And then I kind of nudged him and I said, oh, uncle, you think so hala, you know, and I just shook him a little bit and he didn't wake up. And he actually never woke up. And I was like, oh, super traumatized. You know, I thought maybe I killed the patient. But of course, I hadn't. It's just he had reached his time and he had passed away. And that's palliative care for you. You know, people die on a, on a regular basis every single day. So if I had just stopped at that moment and said, I'm not going to do this anymore. I think that I would have really regret regretted it a lot. Because if I had just focused on my fears and my worry that I'm not going to be a good doctor, I would not have found this profession that I deeply, deeply love and feel very fulfilled by. Another example is the fact that I actually loved writing and I love travel. So a couple of years ago, I said, wouldn't it be awesome if I became a travel writer? but I hadn't any idea how to start it. But I decided to take one first step. And what I did is I started a blog. It was a travel blog. I kept it private, and I didn't let anybody read it, not even my husband. And my husband was like, that's crazy, you know? What's the point of starting a blog if you're not going to let anybody read it? But that, for me, was just my first step because it was just a tiny step, but a first step doesn't need to be like a grand dramatic stride. It can just be a little thing. And that first step led me to get my first story published in a magazine, and then they liked it, so another story got published, and then other magazines asked me to be a travel writer, and now I'm actually a travel writer. And it wouldn't have happened if I just thought, oh, it would be a good idea, but I didn't do anything about it. I think this um, just do it motto applies the most in entrepreneurship, because when I started my business, I, I had no idea how to go about it, no idea where to start, how to start, so I just had to do it step by step. I spoke to a bunch of people, talked to a lot of people actually, started to write a business plan. Actually, I read a book on how to write business plans and then I wrote a business plan. And then step by step, my business idea actually turned into an actual business. And at the time, I, you know, obviously what I ended up with was very different from what I set out to do in the beginning. But that's the nice thing about taking things step by step because you learn things along the way and you can iterate along. And I think every single step has got an intrinsic value. You build confidence with each step. You meet new people, build connections, and develop networks. And then you create opportunities for yourself and become a better person, basically. Gain a lot of experience, like the first speaker said. So also, I think it's important to remember that even if you fail, that's just another step on your path and your journey towards success. In short, everything that I have done today all started because I took a first step and it led to another and another and another and I wouldn't be who I am or where I am today if I hadn't just taken that first step and just did it. So if you are at a crossroads and are asking yourself, should I do it? Firstly, ask why you want to do it. And if you like the answer, then just do it. Thank you.